Well, welcome back to the shop. Um, today's project, it's a simple project, but a lot of things I can talk about. Oh boy. Uh, we have here a neck receiver from a Martin Committee alto saxophone. You may be able to see, let's see if I can align it with a straight edge there. You can see how it's belled out at the top. And the whole thing is, well, it took a whack at some point, so it's not round, and it doesn't fit very well. So, I'm going to make a new one. The tenon on the neck is pretty good, but I'm going to make a new receiver. But it has this interesting feature. The Martins have a screw that locks down in the slot, rather than um, tightening a closing gap on the ring. My material of choice is bronze, and the first thing we're going to talk about is lathe accuracy and concentricity. Um, the outer diameter of this is 1.125. This is a one and an eighth bronze bearing but it has a little bit of extra on there. This actually measures four thousandths large. It's 1.129 is what this measures to, which is good because it's got some stamping there that I have to clean off. Um, so basically, I have to move my cross slide in a whole whopping two thousandths of an inch to get that to size. Where you run into problems is self-centering jaws on lathes. For this sort of accuracy you don't really want to trust them for that. Uh, if I were to turn this on, if you look real close you can see a little bit of wobble there. Um, so we're going to see exactly how much wobble. Zoom this out here. I'm going to set up an indicator. Uh, see if we can zoom in on the indicator here. So the indicator, this is a, each tick is half a thousandth of an inch. Uh, so 0 .0005. Uh, the numbers that you see are thousandths of an inch, 0 .001. And remember I have to be Basically, this is, I got to be within plus or minus two um, to have room to cut. And I am a little bit off from plus or minus two. So we've got plus three, minus four. So I'm out seven thousandths on the rotation. That doesn't do me any good when I have to cut four thousandths. So we're going to switch over to the four jaw chuck and I'm going to show you how to use one of those. Okay, real quick before my battery dies. Um, four jaw chuck. Four independent jaws. Uh, they make three jaw chucks, four jaw chucks, six jaw chucks um, with independent jaws. And what this allows you to do is really dial in where the center of that is. Um, and since we're dealing with only being able to take off four thousandths of an inch, that center is kind of important. So I'll zoom back out here and see what's going on. And the way you center things on a four jaw chuck is you have to rotate it and look for the high spot and the low spot. Right now I have my indicator pretty close to the top so as a jaw goes by that we're just fortunate enough here to have that high spot coincide with the jaw. So this is the high spot we'll check yep looks like a low spot is pretty much on the opposite side now the low spot needs to go up and the high spot needs to go down. So with this one being low, we just 
back off that screw a hair, come back over to the high spot, tighten up that screw a hair, and then we see where we are. And it looks like we can do a little more. Now if you're out a lot on four jaw, multiple jaw independent chucks, you can end up chasing your tail, especially if the high spot is in between jaws. Uh, that that can be that can take up your afternoon. So um, I'll fiddle with this a little bit, and I'll sh come back and show you it all dialed in. Uh, like I said, my battery light is blinking, so we will pause here, and I will I will come back. Okay, here we are back with this all dialed in didn't take too long, took me about five minutes. Um, sometimes it takes longer. That was that one was pretty quick. I'll zoom in here on the indicator so you can see exactly what's moving and what's not. Each tick mark is five ten thousandths of an inch. And I don't think I got any movement there. So that's pretty good. I am comfortable with that, with taking my four thousandths off with that. Okay, we're back. Outside diameter turned out really well. It's one and an eighth right on the money. Um, the tricky thing about bronze is on these small machines is it pushes back against the tools hard. Um, so I had to take a much deeper cut than the dial indicated. Um, but that's all about learning how to use your machine. Next step is boring out the hole. The neck tenon has to fit in this hole. Neck tenon on this horn measures 0.995. One way of doing this is to take your calipers and stick them in there and measure. I wouldn't recommend doing that. That's not terribly accurate. So we have telescopic gauges. These usually come in sets of four. Um, and they're, they're pretty decent quality, but when you get them, you want to make sure that these plungers move smoothly. This one's got a little bit of hitch in its get-along. I should probably take it apart and clean it. Um, maybe lap some faces in there. But even the ones that are stamped brown and sharp uh, might have some issues. You can see that's staying put on its eye. Uh, but I do have some grit in there that I have to get rid of. But basically you turn this little guy down here and it locks these in place. Um, so we want to start small put it in there, release it. So now that spring loaded, those spring loaded plungers are pushing against the side. Tighten this down when you have this you know pretty perpendicular and then rock it to one side before you pull it out. These faces are rounded so by rocking it to one side it's going to stay at its maximum sprung distance. And now, now what do you do with it? Well, now we adjust the focus on our camera. And take a micrometer. And you just, it's a feel thing. You just want to get it so it's in there, um, just barely touching the surfaces the micrometer and then you take your reading and that is pretty darn accurate. So this is definitely worth a set of tools worth having in your toolbox. Okay I have the tenon receiver outer diameter on spec 1 inch 0.125. I have the inner diameter on spec uh, 0 0.996 and Next we're going to move over to the mill 
and make this lovely slot that the Martins are known for. And we'll talk about some math and we'll talk about other fun things. Okay, we have our neck receiver that when last we left it, this was on the lathe and I'm able to take this chuck off of the lathe and screw it straight onto my rotary table. There, that is nice and secure so I can rotate that around the center axis and make this lovely slot that is so common on the Martin saxophones. Okay, next order of business, setting up our part, I've got it in the rotary table, as you remember from a long time ago, uh, the part is in the four jaw chuck, the four jaw chuck transfers right over to this rotary table, has a common uh, adapter thread, so I can just screw this on, and I know that this is going to be concentric as it rotates. It's the same orientation as on the lathe. Um, had to get this set up of course so this is straight with the table and perpendicular this way so I had to indicate off the face of this and up and down um, which got a little bit tricky because don't have a lot of clearance on these little Sherline machines. I might get a different column for this that gives me a little bit more clearance. Um, this eight direction column uh, it's handy for some things which you will see in an upcoming project but it, it's starting to become more trouble than it's worth to me. But anyway that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about an edge finder. The slot on our fine neck receiver is a known distance from this top edge. The center line of this slot is, what is it, 400 thousandths from this edge. So it helps to know where this edge is in relation to the center of the quill. Well, this machine doesn't have a quill, but you know what I mean. So. For those who haven't used an edge finder before, you can get a set of these, or you, you might be able to get single ones. Um, basically this cylinder has a spring in it that's fastened to this piece. And through the magic of physics, as this is rotating and it comes against here, it's going to behave a certain way and tell us exactly when the center of this tool actually I'm sorry exactly when the edge of this tool I don't have a pointer uh, pointer when this edge here is perfectly against the surface that's why it's called an edge finder so when you have your edge finder you want to make sure that this slides real easy if there's any grab at all start by cleaning those surfaces. You don't want any oil in there. Um, oil can accumulate grit and dirt and gunk and this thing has to slide easily. And after cleaning it off, if it still feels kind of gunky and grabby, those surfaces may need to be relapped. And you can find um, all sorts of videos on YouTube from uh, Tom Lipton at Ox Tools uh, does a, has a video on restoring um, edge finders, I think. Stefan Gotswinter does one, Robin Renzetti, and this old Tony. So you have a lot of, a lot of things to choose from on uh, 
seeing how to lap those surfaces in and not mess it up worse. Um, but anyway, edge finder. You want this to be rotating about a thousand RPM and you want to check that. If you're going too fast, you're going too slow, it might be a little bit goofy for you. So your target is around 1000. If you go really fast, since there's a spring in here, this could take off on you and um, bounce into places unknown when the spring shears off. Um, don't ask me how I know. So we want to start with this a little bit off center. It's going to be rotating eccentrically and then we're going to bring the part up against it and this will straighten out and it'll look like it's running straight but we want to keep on advancing slowly, very slowly and then all of a sudden we'll see it jump and that's where the edge is. So, a demonstration. Notice it's smoothing out and smoothing out and smoothing out and that looks like it's running pretty straight but it's not there yet. There it goes. There's the edge. Now this is the point where you want to set your zero, back it up, knock that out, and do it again. And there it is. And if your zero that you set the first time isn't the same place where it jumps out the second time, check it again. It's not going to hurt. It's easy to do. Uh, looks like I'm off by a thousandth, so I'm going to tweak my zero just a hair and try it again. Bingo. Right on the money. So now we have a thickness here. The center of the column is not over that edge. This piece here is 200. It's going to say 199 but I lost a foul on this. So we got 200 thickness here so that means I have to move I'm going to back this up out of the way. Since my dial is on zero, I know I can go 100 total travel. And now the center line of the tool, any tool I put in here, is right over that edge. So now I can move accurately my 400 to the center line of the slot. And we're going to do that next.